So another topic that's hot in the Wi-Fi space that I've read about on some of your blogs and, uh, you know, I've definitely heard you guys talking about is sort of design standards. Like, um, you know, you should have one AP per classroom or, you know, just lay out a grid and put the APs at the vertex of the grid. Um, I, I think I know your opinion on this, but um, who wants to say, what's your opinion on this? Uh, Jen. What's your opinion on this? I, I say that if, if you've got no building, you just have a floor plan, and you don't have the budget or you don't want to spend the budget to have a predictive survey done or what have you, then I guess a grid would be a starting point. And then maybe once the building's built, have somebody actually go in and see what you got from the APs being put just on a grid, and then take it from there. That's kind so, of so if you're going I, I disagree Greenfield. with that. I disagree with that. I, I wouldn't put it on a grid. Uh, I would go to a predictive survey. Absolutely. But if you don't pay somebody to do that, you've got the guy with the Dixie cup. Well, a grid would be better than a Dixie cup, maybe. So, so when I you start to look at the surveys, just a Dixie though, cup at that but, point. Yeah. Now, the, the, the people who support grid, Dixie, also are the guys who pull the cables, and their standard says we're going to go on a grid ever x number of meters. We're going to pull as many need, cables we need, as we possibly can. The, the current is two cat yeah. sevens. What? is actually in their standard two cat sevens every 18 meters in a grid pattern and have switch ports for all of that. So it helps the switch manufacturers, yes. helps the cable pullers, helps all those guys and it's whether or not we're going to... And, and then, yeah. But then how do you... And where do you actually put your APs? Yeah, you have this just predefined places, just, yeah, it could be a but wall. how close do you put yeah, them? Exactly. In? Well, you know, on, on green, uh, Greenfield <laughs> buildings, which another? I'm doing right now, we are doing a 10 by 10 meter grid cabling on new buildings because we have no idea what the floor plan is going to look like. So we just tell the cabling contractor, bid us a quote for 10 by 10 grid and do it. So is and that, then, but is that for quoting purposes or are you actually No, that's for the build. By yeah. So right from the build. So you start, you take a, a floor plan, skate, put it in 10 by 10, two runs of cat six a, and it's done. And then down at the, um, at the, uh, big swap, the pictures all cat six, right? Ready to go. And then at some point in the future, you'll overlay your APs. Exactly. It, leaving and lots and, and lots of spare all, right? cable up there, it's cheaper to pull the cable before than after. Yes. That's or, right. So, because so, yeah, of yeah, well, kept, Why not just put one AP in every classroom? I mean, at that point, isn't there enough spectrum in 5 gigahertz? You turn off the offending 2.4 gigahertz radios, and when you leave the 5 gigahertz radios on, you just get extra capacity. No, there's Here's not. the reason why, because it costs twice as much as you should have spent, and that's taxpayer dollars going for something you don't need. But, uh, it's e rate. It's minor little, minor little from, point from, there. From, sorry. From an ease of, from an ease of, hey, I'm a principal. I, I, I have to do a budget right now. Yeah. I know how many rooms are going to be in there. I don't need to wait for somebody to come and quote me services and do a design and come on site and do all this mess. I'm just going to put one AP everywhere. I will take your uh, analogy and just say it slightly different and see how ludicrous it sounds. I'm a By principal. Way, advocate. I don't. I, do <laughs> I don't know how many students I'm going to have because the changes depending on who is in my neighborhood. So I'm going to build two kitchens and two cafeterias just in case I have enough people that I need to feed them all. And I want to feed them all in one sitting. No one in the right mind would say, why do I have two cafeterias in a school? Why don't you just put them in shifts? That's how we save money. We don't have two cafeterias. And, and yet you're saying, we want to have all of these APs because it's easy. Well, two cafeterias are easy. Having everyone eat at the same time is simpler. Isn't well, we that, have no, solutions no, no. that save money. No, well, why stop at K through 12, too? I mean, why K through 12 one-to-one, -one, but no other... Not higher ed. Why not this building? Why not an AP in every office? Well, uh, well, absolutely. Why not a hospital room? Every, every, AP in every hospital room. Why do we need design Isn't professionals? That easy? Predictive that be easy surveys. Design? Why do we need any of that? Well, and, and I'll ask you the question in a different way. When they build a school, they build a school for forty-five seats in a classroom, regardless of what enrollment's going to be. They don't go. They don't wait for enrollment day and go. Ah, oh, this classroom's only going to have twelve kids. We're only going to put twelve desks in. Desks in. They put forty-five desks in every blasted classroom, whether they're filled or not. But isn't that a starting point, just connectivity and, uh, and coverage? That's the main part, uh, starting point. You do a site survey, and then af after it all, you do a client walkabout and check it. The other piece but is would that you install twice as many lights as you need? Just because well, it's easier than well, trying to figure out which grid anyway? am I going to put them in? Don't we anyway? And then we rely on power saving uh, features of the and environment. Then we unscrew to every other bulb. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and they do, or they rely on, on motion sensors to turn off the lights in the underneath classrooms. Isn't that what they do today? But it just, I'm just saying it's inefficient. From, from, it may it's be easy, inefficient, but inefficient. It may be inefficient, but think about it this way. Um, if you guys, you know, I mean, you know the political layer, right? 
if and I, that's why I like the idea that that you would definitely use it for budgeting, right? Yeah. You know, if you're just trying to figure out how much money this is going to cost, you might just lay down a grid and say, I'm going to need X number just because of budgeting. But also think about it this way too. What if isn't isn't it better to overspec it than underspec it? No. No. Well, there's oh, actually, overspecking you, it to Stephen. the ridiculous, and then there's giving yourself a margin of error. Okay. Mm -hmm. So well, that's, you're that's kind of getting good, into the ridiculous. Exactly. That's a really good point, Stephen, because in, in our end, we can't go back to the well later on. No. So if we spend it now, it's done. The infrastructure's in place. The building blocks are there. We've got it set up for security cameras, APs, whatever else we want to use, and we've reprovisioned mm -hmm. the, the jacks in the room and everything else. We've kind of built it because when are you going to ever recable? A hospital. That, yeah, but Steve, that it's makes so sense expensive. on uh, that makes sense it on is cabling expensive. and cabling. You know, multiple drops per classroom. I'm all behind. Yeah. Multiple drops per hospital room. Yeah. But to install and buy switch ports and install APs so, in every one of your hospital rooms, saying in the future we might need it. That's that's no, the ridiculous. Getting, side. getting the plumbing ready. Like so that's what I'm talking that, about. Yeah. So, so Not things that are actual... hard to change later. Right. I'm all for. Yes. The hospital for profit. Schools are paid for by us. If hospitals but he's are from profit, Canada, yeah. but we're paid by both, right? So well, the public pays both. You're Canadian, so that's right. So <laughs> get Stu's here for right? a minute. Tenth man, tenth man out, he goes down. No. But, but when you when you build a school, though, especially from the ground up, you, you, most folks are trying to roll infrastructure costs into build costs because right. they can. That, that's how they pay for it. And when they go to the well once, they don't, they can only go once, and so you have to buy a worst case scenario. That's Again, true. I'm not necessarily advocating it, but I mean that's the approach but, that everybody. That's why we have. That's why we have oh, predictive yeah. surveys. We can design and get really close, and yeah, over absolutely. we can over design and still be way under one AP per classroom from a cost standpoint, and still have excess capacity. Some it's people it's can just open swinging design, into right? the world of ridiculous. So, so, when you so go George, that George, what do you? Yeah. yeah here, here again, you know, I think we're missing a point, at least somewhat. You have to have a solid <coughs> survey, right? Yeah. Solid survey. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you, you spend so much time. And if you put money to time, so much frustration to playing cleanup after the fact. And a predictive right? is not a survey. Right? Yeah. Only thing worse a than spending is. so much so, money So you could talk about overlaying a floor plan. You could talk about, you know, uh, AP per room. On the end of the day, it has to get right the first time. And I've seen so many times where nobody even consults anybody that knows anything about Wi-Fi. They just do the grid and they go. And then they and call they us like in guests. when they've got problems. And it's like, well, who thought that was going to work? But or worse, in, that, there's, in that situation, you, what there's, do you think about no, having a rule of thumb like white paper I, I think I think the rule of thumbs are our problem that's causing it. I've, I've done a lot of stadiums lately. Do hard work. And the stadium people go, oh, I'll tell you how many APs you need, and it's based on number of seats divided by how many users carry how many devices divided by the number of, fl and it's all based on a calculation that says, oh, we need 180 APs. Not a oh, thought of how many when we're going to be able connect. to get frequency reuse. Yeah. Your actual throughput, your capacity is all based on how often you can reuse the same frequency. It has nothing to do with counts. And so they do the easy way because it's a math. One AP per classroom is a well, nice rule of thumb. Let me, let me ask you this. You know, how many of you guys do work for school districts and every school, every middle school built in the last 10, 15 years looks the exact same? Every elementary school in the, built in the last 10 years looks the, is very slight variations on the same model, same construction material, probably built by the same company. Uh, we went in, and you went in and, and surveyed the first school. We did the hard work, and guess what? This design works. We go put it in 10 other schools, and it works. Now, that but, would be cool. Instead of having one AP per classroom, have architects or work with a, 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 an engineer to plan where the APs should be in this yeah. School. Except for the fact that those engineers are the ones doing the grids yeah. over yeah. the past yeah. five years. And the thing is, yeah. we had. So if you did that, you, you don't grow for scale or for tomorrow's applications. Yeah. Right? And, and yeah. you're assuming that whomever did the site, who paid, who fronted the design the first time around, that that's going to work for every single building. No, I, for I, I agree. Next, but, next you know, of, of course, I just got done doing all of these in one year. But, you know, it's like, hey, this is the design we're shooting for. I go do one. And I have 10 other schools that look the exact same. Well, except for the fact that I've seen two environments built by the same company, built using the same materials, built using the same floor plans, with wildly different RF characteristics. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I won't discount that. The brick bot last year is different than the brick bot two years or, ago. Or, or, I, I have a thought to float to you guys to see. Shouldn't it be something that we could do as an industry together to work with the architect side to get in better design cycle at their part? 
they're already doing, they, they do they details do of stairs HVAC. and HVAC and power cabling. Oh, uh -huh. And but we allow them to go in and do the grid because they don't know how to do it the right way. Right. If we but, can interface in but sooner. Wi-Fi is a fad. You didn't hear? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> don't know. And why should they care? I mean, I'm not sure. Or sure stairs, do. but yeah. I mean, really, Big C is just ahead of the game. They're getting ready for, you know, 60 gigahertz. One AP, microcells. yeah, yeah microcells every in every classroom. So really, they're just getting ahead of the game before the industry catches up to them. But you can you, you can use so, that cable. Yeah, they're, they're predicting we're gonna have lots more frequency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can use that for other stuff, like you know, uh, in ceiling projectors that have Ethernet ports, smart boards, hmm. that Cameras. kind of stuff. That that Cat six, Cat seven cable isn't yeah. isn't completely it's not worthless. worthless. Yeah. And the cost of pulling the second or third or fourth cable in that in that room or whatever just material. Uh, is is very low cost compared to the cost of the guy sitting there physically pulling the cable from the comm closet mm -hmm. so so what's your recommendation everybody what's how do we sum this cable up? heavy and then do a real survey yep yeah I just survey. changed the word the survey to design is, is there fair, fair. No, yeah. like I said when I say about design because this Pretty is what I mentioned at work the only thing worse than paying all this money for design is paying for it again so make sure you have a proper design and then because I ran into people, they run into all these budgets. They do, they fight the battle, they win the holy war to get the money spent. And then the people that did the design don't know what they're doing. I, I mean, maybe I, I didn't say that really, but. <laughs> yeah, so, I say predictive, yeah, proper survey. and then post-survey, or active, yep. and then post-survey. Well, why, so why is it that the new builds, why, are, why is it that there are certification standards that, that, we, that folks rely on, like RCCD? Right, uh, you don't go to a go to an architect that's not an RCCD. Well, why don't you do the same thing? Uh, why, why is there we not have an the organized? Same? <laughs> well, that's very very. Yeah, true. we we have yeah. an organized. I like to call this meeting of the first uh, wireless union. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was an organization. there was an organization of wireless land professionals or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like you know, <laughs> by that domain. You can, you can yep. call certifications maybe. You know, a certified wireless LAN professional. But just if you <laughs> look back at the history of accountants, of lawyers, of doctors, they form a group, a, that consortium. Then, a consortium that then puts pressure to get the laws changed. Architects are in the same boat. You, I mean, to become a, an architect, you got a, that's a long yeah. battle. But then once you're there, you're in the game. We still have a very open, anybody can get in and play. Exactly. Or you can actually, around this table. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Or you can go and design Wi-Fi having no skills whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but well. No one would ever pay for a building to be built so without slow. an official yeah. architect that has a professional engineer signed off on the engineering. We're sitting back here with this thing that's actually very, very important and critical, and there's no regulations at and all. And there's an irony in that you have, like, we, we sat in one of the vendors this week in their place, and they're big into our high-performance network. Look how great we are when everything is done right. Yet their marketing is pushing the one-to-one. -one. It's convenient. We can sell more if we just do one-to-one, -one, and the two can work against each other. And it, again, back to my earlier point, it's only one-to-one -one for K through 12. They tapped into a market of ignorance. You've got administrators that don't know yep. squat about technology. That's I can wrap my head around either. that. It's easy. I can count my classrooms. So There's my the budget. Friction, they're reducing mm -hmm. the friction to a sale. Yeah. And then they're going to land the sale, and then that account manager goes on to somewhere else, and they have no ownership long term. Well, for that, that would be exactly on no his speedboat. That he yes. just got from the commission, yes. that's okay. where he goes. And yeah, then absolutely. other guys have to figure it out. So in some ways, marketing is working against the people that take pride in the product and the fact that when you do it right, it's really, really hot. And doing it right, half of the half of the vendor organization is saying, well, everybody knows what goes into doing it right. Survey is key. Survey is number one. Good design, blah, blah, blah. And then you got marketing saying... <laughs> Not in K through 12, one to one, baby. That's all there is to it. Like, like George is a prime example. If you do it right, it works. Yeah, it works. And George yep. does it right. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. It does. And, and and I know he does <laughs> because it works. Here's a business model. Follow <laughs> 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 